Hello, it's Istvan again. Let's check if everything is fine. Yes. So you see my Inkscape window. I'm using this time the new Inkscape point 91, which is a new release, really just one, two weeks old. And uh, it works faster and a bit different than the previous Inkscape. And some things changed. I hope all the best. <laughs> to be honest, it was a bit slow the other day, but I'm getting used to it. OK, so what I will draw today is a little fish, which is uh, what is the weekly challenge, uh, what I just submitted to the Inkscape group, what we have on Facebook. Every week, I'm posting a challenge there. Um, so people who are drawing with Inkscape have some topic to draw about. And this week, it's a, the topic is fishes. So what I will draw, I was looking around for some tropical fish because I have an aquarium as well at home. And I was looking at uh, butterfly fishes. These are very nice uh, tropical fishes. So let's just draw my little fish. And I hope it will work. It has a very bright orange color, so I will do the same, make it orange. As you see, I'm using this time just the Bezier tool, setting up the shapes. This could be anything. That's what I like in Inkscape. You can change it anytime. And I'm just checking if it's visible. Yes, it is. If you have any questions, please let me know because I see it on the side. OK. Let's have the tail. See, I'm double clicking, adding new nodes and stuff. Flipping it so it's a bit bigger on the top. I think it's called butterfly because it has an eye on his body as well, but I'm not sure. By the eye, I mean it has a special dot up here. And the whole fish is orange and white stripes, so. Something like very bright. I'm not going to make it white. I will make it almost orange. I think there are so many colors in Inkscape, and we are we should use it. So I mean, you know, not just use the basic colors, but mix your own ones. The same I will do here. And I make it a bit darker on the bottom. Or I use this color on the bottom and some even more bright on the top. Perfect. The tail is supposed to be white or the same bright color which it has. Yeah. I want it to have an eye around here. I'm just going to make it brown now.
and let's make some more lines. I'm just doing it more or less. You see, I do this a lot. I'm not, uh, I could use the Bezier tool like clicking and holding. So like you click, you hold, and you can make a Bezier curve. But what I do is I just click around and then I use the node tool to clean up my shapes, make them a bit more wavy, make them curvy. I'm just control clicking the nodes to make them not edges, but curves. So if you look at like this, we are already getting there. This one has to be upside down, I think, yes. Like this. And somewhere here it has another dot, which is not really circular, it's a bit different. I think it's for predators to, yeah, it's for uh, tricking them, so they don't know what is the, that is the actual eye of the fish. See, I'm not using black, I'm using always something close to black, and I do some some things like this shading or something because it's the same reason I'm not using perfect white without a if only if I really want perfect white and it's because there are so many colors which are almost white and almost black and if you use these colors it seems that you took care you're not just flip their black and white but you took some time and made your own colors and your own ideas now let's make it a bit shiny So far, so good. I'm saving and duplicate my fish a bit. Just doing, doing some shadowing. I'm just setting the opacity so it's almost not visible. This is also one thing, it's a little detail which can add up to your drawing. So you do something and then you make it almost not visible, but still giving some value, some little details. And I will do the same here, not another. Nice. Looks nice and shiny. If it's so shiny, let's try the new gradient tool where with one click you can add stops into your design.
So you double click somewhere and you add some stops. So you can make some more shiny parts. Yes, it's working. See what I did there? So I have a gradient with another stop in the middle. It's too yellow now, but it's like the fish is coming out. Now I have to have the same effect on these. So just slightly from this color to say this one this on the top I make even more bright that's fine and in the middle I'm giving a very bright one and here I use white so you see it's exactly what I wanted it's a bit popping out okay it's too much yes if you compare it to the previous fish, that one seems a bit flat compared to this one, or this is what I would like to achieve. So, let's make the eye of the fish. Just duplicate and use the same brown. I want him to look downwards. I want to tell you now that my aim is to make a teenager fish who is a bit bored. Okay, it's working. That's why I made the lips like this. When I saw the lips of this fish, they look so funny, like they are so unsatisfied. And that was my original idea to make a fish who is a bit bored, like, yeah, what's up, whatever. So it has this general teenager look on his face. <laughs> Sorry if I'm insulting teenagers. I was one as well. And I know how these things are. So... Just a slight maybe I don't even need this. As a cartoon character, I, uh, I have now the problem that to make the eyes bigger, like this, the so cartoon character is more expressive if, if the eyes are big, but this type of fish has a small eye, so. Maybe it's not needed. One more thing I would like to do is some shine here. These two objects. This will help him shine and make him look like a bit like rubber. Because I will make this white like pure white and different. And here I will <clears throat> here I will do the same. So see I'm just clicking on every node or almost every node. And I'm trying to make it so now it's even more shiny uh, what if I don't make it shiny but make it dark yes it's better and what if I make this shine even more visible <clears throat> the only thing I didn't add is the fins
Yes. And I can duplicate it and reuse it. Hello. Make it a bit darker. Okay, what I want to change now, I have like three different fishes now. What I want to change now is the eyes because it's a clip. A clip is like a group, a special group. So you can double click like any group and go into it. And you can modify. Okay, now he looks even more bored. And you can modify what is inside the clip. And I will show you what am I talking about. If I'm going out. And I release the clip. Yeah. So I have now an object like this, and an object like this, a group like a group from that, and a cut object. So if I go in, see what's happening. If I move this one inside the clip, it's everywhere clipped. Suspicious. I wanted something like this. Okay, we can put some shine up here as well, just a tiny. And one more thing. dark underline because I want to make it like tired eyes maybe this is better I know fishes have no eyebrows but hey I have to do this so split eyebrow and I can make it a bit darker so <clears throat> this is my little fish now I can make the same shine if I change, I see the shines here, or how is it going? I can make the same shine here and a bit here. And 
what it will make. It makes the, this mouth stand out even more. I just merge it with this one. No. Okay, this was not very much needed, or only if this part is as well. You see, I'm experimenting a lot. So, there's no recipe how you can do an object or how you can draw something. Although I made a sketch about this fish before, I'm experimenting with the lights and everything. Let's see if I merge it with this. Okay, looks nice. And now I want these to be on the top. What if I blur this a wee bit? And I have to blur this as well. Okay, now we are getting there. And this patch as well, I have to blur. Okay. What I like in this fish is that it has his little fins. And up here, there is also other fins, which I'm going to make look like hair now. So what I will do is and some little hair, you know, this type of little pieces. And it won't be this color, but that's what I like in Inkscape as well, that Nothing is final. You can change the color or everything, whatever you want. So now I'm just finishing the shape and the last color I used. And this is this brown. It's standing out quite OK. Good, good. Save, I duplicate and I move on to the next phase. My little cool fish, which is a, we will try to merge it with the basic shape. Yeah. A little cool guy. I'm not satisfied with this one in the beginning. So I go back. And once more. Okay, he looks good enough, colorful, but still bored. That's good. And ah, I see your question. I'm sorry, I have to check all the time back. Ben asked if uh, how do I switch to outlines? Well, Inkscape can show you the display mode, and it's normal, no filters or outline. No filters mean they remove the blur, and outline is just that, outline. Green is the sign of the clipping mask I'm using. And the shortcut for it is uh, Control 
and the five on the numeric keyboard. See, so view display mode, control five. So I'm doing it very fast, usually just to check how many objects I have, what is behind what, it's a very good tool. Okay. And just to make him a real teenager, let's give him a phone. Just checking questions all the time. I'm sorry. Okay, so we can give them, give him a phone. We can make it this brownish color, so it's not black. And the screen can be like this. So it's shiny. And let's make a shine now. I usually do this when I do shiny surfaces. It's just two lines like it's reflecting a window or something. And in this case, I will use it as well. Let's give it a button. We all know what type of phone is this. Now I turn it, I can make it a bit smaller. And I can make this brown, maybe orange or something, because he's also orange. Or this type of yellowish thing. Cool. And what I can try with the phone is to, because my character is so fluid and bendy, I can blend, bend the phone as well. It doesn't have to be a square perfectly. So I turn this into a path with Shift Control C. Same here. You see much more cartoony. Don't ask me how he's using the phone. <laughs> I don't know. But just for the fun of it, let's say that he's using it. Okay, it would look cool on the orange background actually, but because it's underwater, I am thinking to give him, obviously, a blue background, maybe some type of orange. And blue.
usually when I'm ready with one part of the drawing, I group it up. Like now I group it up my fish, group up my fish. So it's one piece, I can move it around. And it's up to me to decide how much background I'm giving. What I'm doing now is doing some bubbles. Just for the moment, some very bright ones. As you see, my bubbles as well working the same way as a lot of things I do. So I just now use the Bezier tool. And that's it. And then the node tool to fix it up. As you probably saw documentaries and stuff or just, you know how things are underwater Bubbles are not perfect square uh, spheres underwater. They are bending and changing and everything. So this is what I try to do here. I'm just clicking on the edge. And I change the shape if it's needed. What I will do now is add a bit more bubbles with the spray tool. Just to give it more randomness. And for example, this one I delete because it's too low. Now I add up all my bubbles and make them one. Now I can give some shine to the bubbles. Seems a bit too much work, but it's really just a few clicks and it works out. Just take care that all the shines are on, on each of the bubbles are in the same way. You don't care about the very small ones. Okay, already looks better. Someone asked how I round the shape of the bubbles. It's how I rounded the shape of the fish and the shine and the stripe of the fish as well. So I'm showing again. You see, I'm just doing fast clicking and making the, sh the shapes. And you see all the nodes here are diamonds standing on the edge, which is which it means that the no node is holding a corner. As for example, this one holding a perfect curve is a square standing on flat. And what I do, I'm just control clicking and I'm changing from diamond to square. That's it. And then I'm just moving it. And the same goes here. You see, so I'm just <clears throat> doing a rough shape. And then I'm control clicking it and deciding which one to click and which one not. This is too close to the edge. And this one too. I made it a bit smaller.
Okay, and I miss this big one. So that's it, uh, the bubbles are looking a bit more shiny already. And my fish is almost ready. One tiny thing I will add is some background, which in this case will be some seaweed. So I put the smoothness on the freehand tool a bit up and I add some seaweed. Let's see if it's good. More or less. This is just freehanding fun. Notice I rarely use freehand tool because I like to be in control of what am I what I am drawing with Inkscape. I use now it only because it will be a quite ins insignificant uh, background element. After using the note the freehand tool I'm pushing control L and control L is for making the shapes uh, simplifying them so it's removing nodes which are not used I make it like this send it to the back and then I make it again Get another color. I just used a path, uh, this path operation, intersection, control and the asterisk, and that's it. And I add some more line here because of why not. Okay, and I can add some more light coming in from the top, and then I'm ready with my drone, with my sea teenager. I could blur these, and uh, you know, a lot of people use it to have a switch back to the blur mode, to have a desktop field effect, and it's sometimes good, sometimes not. I say don't overuse blur if it's not needed. It's not really good to overuse it. This will be white, very transparent. Now these I can blur a bit. Let's see. Yeah. And what I will add is some drawing on the top. You see, I just used Control-5 again to get rid of the blur. It's the, what is it called, um, no filters view. And it's good because it's not slowing my machine now. I'm just really having some fun with the freehand tool. I merge it together. And now I blur it. Let's see if it's working like that. Yes, more or less, it looks like a bottom of the sea. I have to decide which looks better, if it's like this or this. I, because the light is coming from the top, it's better if it's if it's bright on the top. And that's mix some colors more yeah still
still not sure about it. So when I'm not sure about something, what I do, I duplicate everything. Or in this case, I'm copying it. I go back. How it was. And I put Control-V and put uh, the flip one next to it. So it's up to me to decide which one is better. And although the light is coming from here, I like the colors better on this one. The only thing I can do is make this one a bit more brighter on the top, maybe. So I chose this. This is how my little board fishy looks at the end. Um, notice one big thing I did here. I picked an orange fish and I picked the colors of the background accordingly because orange and blue are two colors standing against each other. And they are called the complementer couple. So if you know the color wheel, even just check it here in Inkscape. Uh, let's check something which is flat color. If you see, the blues and the oranges are in the opposite side exactly and that means that they are standing out very nice against each other. So even if it's very small, my little fish stand out on the background. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, this week's topic is fish, so I encourage everyone to check out the group. Uh, I will post the group, uh, the Facebook group address under the video, of course. And I hope you liked it and learned something. I'm checking again the questions, if there is anything to answer. <laughs> Thank you. I see you liked it. And see you next time.